In this video, I'll show you how to paint the Pal Night Enforcer for Necromunda. If this is your first time at the channel and you haven't already done so, then please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified of all my new videos. Let's get going with this Pal Night Enforcer. Now, you might think, how have I managed to prime it like that? What I did was I gave it a prime of black. I then gave it a zenithal prime of white. And then I went back in and painted all the black bits, leaving the white bits. Because that's just going to make it much easier to paint the yellow. Um, before we do start colouring this guy in, I do just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who supported the channel. We've just passed 3,000 subscribers. I'm really, really grateful. It's been a massive surprise to me how quickly we've grown. I'm really enjoying every minute of it. I hope you guys are too. If you do want to support the channel, and you can do by using some of the links in the description, they are affiliate links. Um, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does just give a little bit to me, so it means I can keep buying the models for the channel. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint all the brown leather parts, and we're going to use dryad bark for this. So we've got... This bit of cloth here, I'm just going to paint, and we've got the pack on the waist here. Don't worry if you paint over bits that are going to be metal later on, like that buckle. Just take your time and work your way around. And we've also got all the straps, so we've got the straps and the kind of under part of the, the body armour there, and on this side. And we've also got the straps on the back of the knees. So let's paint them in as well with the dryer bark, just being careful not to get it on any of the other areas. It's not a huge issue if you do, but it's just less tidy enough to do. So work your way around, get all that leather done, with the dried bark, and we'll come back and we'll give it a nice quick highlight. Once all that dryad bark is done, we can go in with some Gawthor Brown. We can just add some little highlights along the edges. So where you can, you can use the shape of the model just to highlight away there. And take your time with this because the most highlighting, less is more. And if it's not the effect you want, then you can either go back in and paint over it with a dryad bark, or you can just add some more Gawthor Brown, depending on which way it's looking. Nice and straightforward. So that's that brown leather highlighted. Next up, we'll have a little look at doing the, the black material. So for the black material, we've got quite a lot. So we've got kind of hard black on the armour, and then we've got the softer black, which is uh, the garment and the dressing. So we'll do the garment first, and we're going to use Storm Verming Fur. It's going to be a little bit of a, a dirty black, I guess. So all we're doing is we're just looking for those highest points. Just going to take the Storm Verming Fur and work it around. Don't forget we can kind of see in here as well. Now we've got the backs of the legs. So all you're doing is you're just looking to follow where the folds go. So this is nice and straightforward. What you'll find is that storm vermin fur dries. It'll start to blend into the, the model a bit as well. So take your time, work your way around all the material parts with the storm vermin fur. Not Storm Vern Fur, that's the next highlight with the Skaven Blight Dinge. I get too excited sometimes. And we'll come back and we'll put the next highlight on. Now it's time for Storm Vermin Fur. So I've just taken, I'm using a slightly smaller brush. I use Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes, links to which are in the description. And we just want to put a much thinner line. 
So we're going over those bits where we've got the scaling blight edge. We're just going to kind of aim for a much thinner line with the storm vermin fur. This is just going to make the garments stand out a bit. So you can see there straight away we've got a nice differentiation. So work your way around all the places you've put that scaven blight dinge and just put those thin lines of storm vermin fur in. So this is a, what size brush is this? This is a size zero Windsor & Newton Series 7. I normally use a size one for getting about the model. Because that's got the best size to tip ratio, I think anyway, for what my opinion counts. So work your way around, make sure you've got that all done, and that's the clothing finished. Next up, we'll have a look at the metallics. For the metallics, we've just really got silver on the Palanite Enforcers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel. Now you can use Lead Belcher, absolutely perfectly fine, but I've just started using the Iron Hand Steel recently, and I find it just covers a little bit better than Lead Belcher. So we've got... The grenades on the chest here. We've got a grenade on the side there as well. We've got this belt buckle. So again, just be careful not to paint over anything we've already done. Of course, if you do, you just go back and fix it, no problem at all. Um, you've got all the little clasps. And you've got the guns as well, so these are all metallic, so I'm just going to take my time and just put a nice thin coat on with the iron hand steel. With a bit of luck, one will be enough. If it's not, just go in and put a second coat on. So work your way around the rest of the model, get all the silver painted, and then we'll come back and we'll shade it. Shading the metallics is really simple as well. Just take some null oil. And just work it over all the bits of silver that you just painted. And take your time with this because you don't want to get it too splotchy. And make sure that you don't put too much on so it pools. So we are take your time with that, get all the bits of silver covered in null oil, and we'll come back and highlight it. Make sure that null oil is dry. Then we're going to go in and we're going to highlight. And the highlight colour we're going to use is Chrome from the Vallejo Model Air range. And all we're going to do is we're just going to try and catch the edge of as much of this metallic areas as we can. Just to add a nice bit of shine, dot over the the rivets on the belt and similarly we're just going to pick a line and just pull a line down through the the gun there just to show the light reflecting off the sharpest edge so work your way around get the rest of the silver done and highlighted and when we come back i think we'll have a look at the black armor so for the black armour, we're looking at the kind of the hard panels. We've got the chest armour, shoulder pads, helmet. We've got kind of parts of the knee pad, and then we've got the kind of shin guards around the back. What you'll notice from the box art is that there's some spotlights on this. It's not just the edge highlighting that we normally do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the paint, sorry, the paint, the light is kind of coming in this way just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Dark Reaper. I'm not going to have too much on my brush. I'm just going to paint that first half of the helmet there. I'm going to let that dry. Just make sure you do both sides. I'm also going to work on this chest plate here. So you can see the paint is really thin and you can actually barely see where I'm putting it on. And that's exactly what we want, because that will help us build up some of these colour patches and spots. So work your way around all the kind of hard armour parts with the Inky by Darkness. 
pulling the paint forward. And the reason I say that, to pull the paint forward, is because then it'll dry with more colour towards the end. So if we look here, and just pull that forward, we're starting to get more colour forming towards the front, which helps us build up the colour of this armour as it's as the light catches it. So what you want to do is do that for all the armour panels. Take your time, work your way around the model. This Dark Reaper is quite a chunky highlight, that's fine, don't worry about it. All we're really doing is leaving the, the black in the absolute recesses. Now this might need two, three, four coats, but that's okay. Take your time and then judge it by yourself in terms of when you think that you've got that colour looking the way that you want it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this and we'll come back and have a look at the, the finished product before, before we start thinking about uh, highlighting up. If you've worked your way around with the Dark Reaper, you can just see this kind of subtle changes in shade on the armour. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing for the next highlight. And this is with um, Thunderhawk Blue. So I'm just going to do the same kind of thing where I'm just going to paint it towards the front of the armour panels. But I'm not probably only going about a quarter of the way forward. So that it just comes over that Dark Reaper. And just brightens it up a little bit. Now we will do edge highlights on this. You know, edge highlight on there when we get to that point. So the next kind of highlight colour we'll use to do the edge highlight, and that will really kind of make the armour pop a bit. And depending on how it looks, then we can potentially look to adjust the the shade a little. If it's too bright, we can shade it down. If it's not bright enough then we can look to add another highlight maybe some blue horror we'll see so just work your way around with the thunderhawk blue similar way that you did with the dark reaper and then once you finish that we'll come back and we'll have a little look ready for the next highlight the last highlight we'll do on the armor for now is fenrisian gray so the fenrisian gray is quite a bit lighter than the Thunderhawk blue. So we're going to use this, we're going to do kind of an edge highlight. Just see how it how it works with the with the other bits of armor we've already done. So it's looking okay at the moment, it's blending in quite nicely. So take your time, this is like I said there's a line highlight, so take your time, work your way around the model. I'm going to try and keep this quite sharp. Where you can, you can use the shape of the model. So it's looking alright at the moment. It's not too bright. It's blending quite nicely. And it does give us that nice kind of dark blue tint that contrasts with the black cloth. So I'm going to work my way around the rest of it, highlighting it all up. And then I'll see how it looks once we've got it all on. And then make a decision as to whether we're going to shade it down a little bit or whether we're just going to actually keep it as it is. So I'm really happy with how that armour and those hard plastic parts have come out. So I'm not actually going to go and shade it down anymore. So what I want to do is I want to do the um, these parts on the van braces. Now on some of the models on the box art they've got screens, on some they're just blank. So I figured let's just make it look as though it could display some information. So just take some Caliban green and just base coat over that screen area. Make sure you leave a little dark line just to delineate between the, the van brace and that. And on this one, because it's a lighter colour, you can see straight away that this doesn't like that and it's a little more difficult to cover. Take your time though because you don't want to get it over it because it'll just take a little bit extra to correct later on. 
So I'm going to go probably give this two coats just to get a nice solid colour of Caliban Green. And we'll come back and just pop some quick highlights on there. Once that Caliban Green is dry, just take some Warpstone Glow. You don't need too much of this at all. Just get some on your brush. And all we're going to do is we're just going to edge a line down here. And across the top and the bottom like that and do the same on this side and then once that's dry just want to take some moot green I'm just want to kind of pop this towards the corners so like I said the whole point of this it just kind of gives the illusion that there could be information on there if the, if there needed to be. So again, just a nice thin line with the moot green. And we'll just keep this to the top there. And the same on this side. Just get the line of moot green and just across the top like that. Okay, so we let that dry. And then when we come back, we're going to do the yellow parts of the armor. And then this guy's pretty much done. For the base, it's a metal base. So you just get your metallics, mix them up, put some gold, some brass, some silver on there, put a nice brown wash, like Agrax Earthshade on it, um, and that'll look really nice. So when we come back, we'll do the yellow parts and then we're done. For the yellow armor, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some wraith bone and we're gonna paint that over all the white bits we've got on there. And the reason I'm doing this, and probably will take two coats to get a nice coverage is because it's warmer than the Corax white which will give you a better yellow color I think than just going straight over the Corax white that's on there so just build this up around all the white bits take your time make sure you don't go over anything that you've already painted like I say you might take two coats to do it and then when it's done we'll come back and we'll start the yellow once that wraith bone's dry, let's get the yellow done. And you probably guess we're going to use a Yandin yellow contrast paint. So what we're going to do is we're just going to paint this onto all the bits where we put the wraith bone. Again, make sure you take your time. You don't want to get it over the bits of armor that we've already done. Where you can, you want to pull it down so that as the paint dries, you'll get that nice transition of colour and that nice rich yellow at the bottom. So just work your way around the model, pulling the yellow towards you. Be careful when you get to the eyes because we don't want to get the hand and the yellow on those because they're going to be a slightly different colour. See I've got some on the uh, grenade there, that's fine, we just going to touch that up later. In fact I'm going to do the eyes because it's just going to make things easier when, when the checking that we've got it right and we're happy with it so work your way around the rest of the model with the yand and yellow so all the bits that are wraith bone and then when we come back we'll have a look at how we're doing and we'll highlight the yellow that yand and yellow has for my money dried quite nicely and it's given us some nice shades so we're just going to highlight that yellow a little and the color for this is flash kit yellow so all i'm going to do with this is just pop some hard line highlights on there, this handle on the grenade keeps getting <laughs> coloured in different shades of yellow. So, just gonna again edge highlight the hard edges of this here. So it's turned out really nice. Um, and you know, based on the box art, you can go in and Add some black colour to it for some for some designs if you want to. I'm probably not gonna do that on this guy, but we will put the decals on before we go to the kind of display part. So just work your way around, get that flash gets yellow on, get that yellow highlighted. Then the last thing we'll do is just the eyes, and then this Pal Knight Enforcer is done, ready for battle. I'm really happy with how the model is turning out. So the last thing we're going to do is the eyes. Now, on the box art, these are kind of yellow lenses. So we're just going to use 
some dawn yellow and we're just going to paint the lenses with that because that will just differentiate them from the rest of the yellow on the mask and there we are that's that pal night enforcer done so we're going to go away now do some decals paint the base and we'll come back and see how we've done so there you have it, this Palanite Enforcer is ready to go down and get dirty with some of the gangs in Necromunda. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. If you've got any questions, then please feel free to ask. Like I said at the start, if you want to support the channel, then there are some links in the description that won't cost you anything extra, but it does really help me get all the models and paints that I need to carry on making these videos for you. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.